Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Digby. This time we have Pink Protoss Styles, who took down game one. Starting at the 8 o'clock position, 12 o'clock position, we have Darren C. This is on Blue Bastic Demon, which I think is a BSL exclusive map. They like putting Bastic in things because of Bombastic Star League. I think they were going for the B alliteration, so you have ASL, BSL, and then CSL. So it's like, you know, ASL, the Premier League, BSL, Top Foreigners, CSL, Collegiate Star League. There are a lot of leagues out there, by the way. If you are a new player and you want to go learn stuff, go to CPL, <laughs> which is the, I think it's the Coach People League is what that stands for. They, I wish I could have participated more in this. Actually, I'm not sure that the grouping has been casted. So Group C actually had Master Ray, who was the head of my team, and they ended up winning the entire thing. Congrats to those. Congrats to those guys. I feel like I was present. <laughs> Managed to, like... Say you, you did it. Uh, Pylon inside base, so nothing cheesy from either player. But there's also RSL, which if you just have no experience with Brood War whatsoever, you're just you're like, you know what, I just want to play fun games in kind of a semi-pressured situation. Check out RSL. And if you just want to play fun games, I would check out the No Hunter Free For All Discord. Other ways to get involved in the community. I feel like on this map, Blue Bastic Demon, Zealots tend to be a little bit stronger, again, because of the lack of ramp. There is, looks like these probes are going to get first scout on top of one another. You know what I'm wondering? I'm trying to think if both player. I'm trying to think if there is a two player map that. If it's a balanced thing, if two player maps have a lack of, a lack of a ramp that's existent out there. Blue Storm, I know, is one of them. And that was a very popular map. Curious about the map making side of things. I guess I should, while I'm talking about that, give a shout out to the Team Think Quick tournaments that they also support the map making community. So if you want to see interesting maps like this one that are created just for the community, the Team Think Quick will get really top guys like Terror and whatnot and put them on kind of more interesting maps to see how they play it out. Unfortunately, I think what that leads to is it leads to players just kind of like feeling their way through a map they haven't played before. I almost, sometimes they'll run tournaments uh, in that space, but I almost feel like for that to work, it needs to be like a really significant prize pool where people put in. A, so I almost feel like it's the guy who prepared more than ends up winning that. Also, what do you guys, this is kind of the, the comments for chat. Do you guys prefer more games or do you prefer like the smaller concentration thing? Because this is kind of the feedback I want to give to, this is the feedback I've been giving since the start of StarCraft, to be honest which is either you can have the league for players or you can have the league for, for viewers. And if you're making the league for viewers, I really feel like it should be just best of five rather than kind of the best of threes, best of whatever, because this is just a lot of StarCraft to watch. I know it's a lot of StarCraft to commentate. I enjoy doing it because it's just I got my cozy chat over here. But um, I worry that it just, yeah, leads to just too much StarCraft everywhere and it's just hard to distinguish the good games to watch. I'm also thinking about doing that that way is just trying to keep in mind the really fun games that were solid to catch overall, and then making that like the one match I put on YouTube or something like that. I guess what I'm saying is, is I feel like because I'm just plopping so many games on YouTube right now, it's like a bunch of hours of watching and I just don't expect you guys to watch every single match. And so I'm wondering how to balance that out. While that's happening, two Zealots on two Zealots plus a Probe. The Probe getting wiped out, but now that's gonna be three on two. Styles still might be able to uh, box out and micro against that Zealot. It's a nice micro from Styles overall. He really took very little damage on that Zealot. So even if he does not get any probe kills, which I think he actually still might, because this probe is hidden in that back line area, he's getting a lot of scouting information. And he still has an opportunity to go ahead and back out with the rest of this. Instead, going ahead and engaging, loses one Zealot for free. Does not yet get a probe kill. Some nice micro from Darren. Oh, there he finally gets a probe kill. So one probe for two zealots, not the best exchange. Darren has five zealots on the ground. This is going to be five zealots versus two dragoons, which is a little bit dangerous, particularly in close quarters. Darren has the superior ground army, but keep in mind it is of inferior composition in theory. Thing for Styles is he might still want to press forward just so he, as long as there's not counter dragoons that can kind of do that forward walking micro. That they can kind of engage. This is actually, if Darren got inside of, got just went after Styles, he would be able to win this fight. But cleverly, I like what Styles has done here. He's pocketed a Zealot. 
So if this army decides to get aggressive and press through, what it can do is it can just run by and try to get additional kills while Darren's distracted. Both players about dead even as far as that range upgrade. It doesn't look like Darren wants to press this. I think what he's going to try to opt this into... I think what he's hoping to opt this into is superior army positioning into a natural expansion that is built more rapidly. Now moving out, and this is going to be critical. Is Does he? No, he's going to stay at home base. But Styles going ahead and plopping down a robotics facility. For a second there, I thought he was saving for Nexus, but it looks like he's going for a Robo as far as his next tier tech, and that is going to give him... Well, we'll see. Citadel of Adun for Darren. That might be build order advantage, and that might turn into build order win. The question is, is, is Darren playing the High Templar defensive or DT defensive position? He's... Or is he just going DT? Um... He's positioning as though he's taking a natural expansion, but he might be being tricksy here. Even putting down that shield battery, saying like, oh, I think you're going lots of... So he's presenting as though, oh, you know what I think you're doing? I think you're going to send an army into me. But instead, okay, now Jig's up. So now it's going to be a Dragoon and a Zealot maybe trying to sneak by. Styles actually has to regroup them because this is just too few units to cope with this. Darren playing this kind of defensive game, which I think, again, I think this is going to be a mind game because there's the Temple Archives right there. So he's showing Styles, yeah, I'm going natural, but in reality, I think he's he's going DT. He's going DT. The observatory is going to be up. So Styles sniffing this out. He's going to go ahead and get a nexus of his own. There's the two DTs and a cannon. Pause and re-engage for both players, hence the chatter. Defensive cannon for Darren. So maybe Darren can still take this with some nice micro, though. The Observer will be there. There's no cannon comparatively, and this is, I think, a larger army for Darren on the ground. Larger supply count for sure is going to see that, and this Reaver is going to be... It's going to take a while for that Reaver to crawl to that natural. Darren engaging now. DTs are not with this army, keep in mind. And where's the Observer? Did he cancel the Observer? I don't see the Observer. That could be a critical thing. Did the DTs get cancelled? That's the next question. Okay, here's the DTs. Oh my goodness. Styles, I think, cancelled his Observer to get the, the... Oh my gosh. Darren. Darren pushed up with that army that forced the cancellation for the Observer. Now the DTs might just win this game, period. Flat. Wow! Great mind games from Darren. So yes, he has a Reaver, but he's going to have to attack his own units to be able to do damage. And they are working. They're just going to try to power down this Nexus. And Styles needs to sneak up and nice split and spread. Yeah, you can see he's attacking his own stuff to try to take these DTs out. So now with that Nexus down, that's going to give Darren a huge lead. Plus no Observer. He just needs to plug this and take damage. Okay, finally an Observer out. Loses one DT. I think that was worth it just to, like, you know, do the escape. Another TT sneaking out in the field. And this, now he can do the same games that Styles was trying to play. So Darren with the play, pushing that army forward, forcing the cancellation, forcing an early reaver, allowing that DT to get work done. And now, even though Darren is significantly behind in the probe count, he's way ahead economically because he has his natural up. DT at the natural getting a little bit too greedy and paying for it with his life. Four gateways up. This is going to be five gateways for Darren to follow this up. No level 1 weapons or anything just being upgraded on his end of things. Dragoon's camped out. Styles has his shuttle. He's got a shuttle, single reaver, bunch of Dragoons. And I think he realizes his situation. So he needs to press up, get something accomplished. Otherwise, that is going to be GG. Darren moving forward to engage this. Needs to be a little bit careful. Nice engagement point. Is going to see the army as it's coming. He's away from that shield battery, which is a sizable advantage. Styles does have a army supply count, but the longer this moves on, the more Darren's going to be able to fill his army out. And that shuttle exposed takes a huge volley, which is going to make this attack even more difficult for Styles. He needs to really baby that shuttle. He's on the corner there. Darren sneaking up, gets the shuttle taken out. He's going to split off these Dragoons to the right, force the Reaver to move that direction, which is going to allow more time for the reinforcements to press through. This is still a big army from Styles, though. Darren falling a little bit behind on his macro. So that shield battery and that 
cannon getting wiped out. No, no energy left. And now Darren has no army to speak of, morphing an Archon to try to provide some sort of fodder. But I think Styles just has too big an army. It's going to be close. If he's going to get it done, he needs to hurry up with this. There's the Archon on the front. It's eating a bunch of the Scarab shots. Darren has no army in his natural right now. Natural expansion is completely exposed. Zealot's pushing forward to try... Yeah, GG from Darren. Oh, that's unfortunate. It felt like Darren did everything to win that match. And then just a really solid... Just peaking that time... Perfect from Styles from that counterattack. Really. And hitting that timing. And getting in and killing everything. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Great play. So it looks like we're going to see Darren move to the loser's match. We'll see Styles move on to the winner's match. From the YouTube perspective, I'll be moving to the loser's match momentarily. From the Twitch perspective, I will be probably pausing here. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys for listening.